There are many extremely useful applications of biotechnology in modern innovative fields, which will be introduced to you in this video. These groundbreaking discoveries will revolutionize the field of biotechnology in the years to come. And some already have in case of the vaccine development, for example, which, you, which we have seen during this pandemic. But it's just the beginning. Traditionally, biotechnology was used for fermentation of food products. And in the 20th century, it was used more frequently in medicine and crop production, which also marks the discovery of medicine biotechnology and other recombinant DNA technologies. But the understanding and applications of microorganisms in different areas has grown past these traditional fields and it is used in a much broader spectrum today. So let's dive into these mind-blowing technologies in the field of biotechnology. The first technology that we are going to talk about is the gene editing through CRISPR-Cas9 technology. It's a very powerful tool which has the potential to revolutionize the world of medicine, agriculture, and beyond. It has already shown great applications in treating genetic diseases, engineering crops for enhancing sustainability, and in many other fields. One of the best examples of this technology is the COVID vaccine development, along with many cancer treatment technologies, which hasn't been perfected yet, but it is on the way. Synthetic biology is basically designing life from scratch, where scientists engineer biological systems and organisms with customizable functionalities or modify the existing ones. It also involves the construction of artificial genetics and assembling them into a functional system to perform a desired function. Some examples of these fields include biofield production, bioremedication, biosensors, drug production, and creation of several novel materials. The third innovative field in biotechnology in modern days is bioprinting. It is basically building or printing living tissues and organs by 3D printing. These products are used in tissue engineering for regenerative medicine, organ transplants, and many other fields in the field of medicine. And bioprinting is also used in implants, which is deriving the cells from the patient itself or the person who wants to get the implants and to make customizable tissues for that person so that the implants are always customizable and treatable if it goes wrong. But in most cases, these types of implants are more stable, so they don't cause any damage or less damage or less side effects to that person. Another great frontier in the world of biotechnology today is microbiome engineering. In this field, the scientists explore the fascinating world of microbiomes, their ecosystems and their behavior, and the most researched microbiomes are the microbiomes found within the living cells, within humans, in our intestines, for example. These biomes play an important role in diseases like obesity and autoimmune disorders in some cases, and understanding them will give us a better idea how to use them in a commercial way, which can be used to prevent or to treat the autoimmune diseases, which are genetically encoded in the DNA sometimes. And some of these microbiomes are very stable and have the potential to be used for targeted therapies. I know of some companies that are heavily invested in precision medicine, but due to its complexity and sensitivity of highly advanced technology, it will take time until the whole process is perfected and used in a more beneficial and commercial manner. Basically, in this field, the genetic and molecular information of a person is used and customized to make the medicine for that specific person. But the products from this technology are specific to one person. And in case of cancer in humans, it hasn't been perfected yet, but what I read somewhere in an article, I think it was Handel's Blatt, there was, it's like a German magazine, and there was an article which mentioned the contributions or the research on this topic from a Canadian company. And they tried to treat the cancer cells in a dog and it worked. So <clears throat> because the genome of humans is much more complicated than dogs, it's gonna take a little bit of more time. But as of now, this field has shown some level of success, in dogs at least. And I myself am really fascinated by this field. And as soon as I get some information, I'll try to make a video and post it for you guys. I have mentioned this field in my previous videos and most of you guys already know about this field within biotechnology. 
It is basically the application of computational tools and algorithms to analyze and interpret large biological information encoded mostly in the DNA or in protein structures. This helps us understand the protein structures and gene expression of biological units. This can be used to discover new drugs. It can help us design genetic engineering experiments and to understand the structure and function of biological molecules that are in general too complex to understand. And just an FYI, we don't know everything about human or living cells and structures. There are still things that are being discovered to this day. So there's a lot to unpack within the genetic coding or with epigenetics and many other structures. And the potential in that information, that unknown information will help us make new products that will treat diseases which we thought are not treatable or are uh, more difficult to treat. So the benefits of bioinformatics can be huge and it is being developed as we speak. I made a video about a year and a half ago on like the new discoveries in biotechnology and bioluminescence was mentioned in that video as well. If you haven't watched the video, go ahead and click here. Basically in this field, the DNA of a luminating organism is modified and integrated into a tree and a plant, which makes them glow as a result of a biochemical reaction at nighttime. This could help us sustain the light at night times and automatically helping in the sustainability of at least some energy sources. As the total population of the world grows year by year, the production of crops must be increased as well to feed the increasing population. An innovative technology that maximizes the crop production in a limited space is possible through vertical farming. It is basically a method of growing plants in vertical stacked layers or structures, typically indoors or in a controlled environment. It aims to maximize the crop production in a limited space by utilizing that vertical spacing instead of like spreading it horizontally, which requires usually much more space. The main advantages of this technology include the usage of small space with minimal uses of resources, little to no risks of crop destruction by natural disasters, for example. And it gives us the possibility of automation for this whole process and as a result, we get an increased production of crops as compared to the traditional farming. I find this field to be very intriguing and extremely fascinating. It is the convergence of nanotechnology and biotechnology, and it involves the application of nanoscale materials and devices in biology, medicine. Nanoparticles can be used for targeted drug deliveries, imaging of organs or tissues, and biosensoring. Additionally, nanotechnology offers new tools for studying biological processes at the nanoscale level, which can be used in diagnostics, especially in cancer treatment. It can also help in assisting the immune system to fight diseases, and it can be used in many different areas because the nanoparticles are so small and compatible with the living tissues and cells. And another great usage of nanoparticles in nanobiotechnology or nanobiotech medicine is the marking or tagging of unwanted cells or particles within living organisms. For example, if there's a cancer cell in a human, well, let me put it this way, cancer cells or um, cancer particles are detectable for now when they're already grown to a certain you know, size, or sometimes it's already too late, or we cannot identify individual cells that have, you know, turned into cancer cells. But nanoparticles have the ability to flow in the bloodstream and attach to cancer cells and identify each individual cancer cell. And the development of nanoparticles hasn't been perfected yet, but it is along the way. It will take some time, but at some point we will make or discover particles that have the ability to do that. So that way we can identify cancer cells, individual cells, and be able to treat them eventually. Huge research is being done on this technology as well. If you're interested, I encourage you to look into this field because it has huge applications in the future. And I find it to be very interesting. There are a lot of other new frontiers that are being researched and have great potential in the future. You might be able to find some papers and some articles, but most of these types of research are patents and therefore not accessible usually. 
That's understandable due to the sensitivity of information about the research in new sectors, but still, you will find some information, some interesting information in articles on these topics. Some other emerging frontiers of biotechnology are bio-inspired engineering, which is using nature as a blueprint to design new material, using mostly fungi, as they show amazing growth patterns. This can include products like bandages that have the ability to heal quicker because they have microorganisms in them and many other biomaterials. You can also look into the new fields that you're interested in. I'm sure you will come across some topic that will change your career direction. And besides, I think it's always interesting to know about new emerging fields within the field of biotechnology. And sometimes it wakes an interest within yourself you didn't know you had. So looking into these new fields can be beneficial, or if not beneficial, at least interesting. So I encourage you to do that for yourself if you want to. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to stay curious and keep exploring the world of biotechnology. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.